So this might not necessarily be a surprise to many of you, but the average university IQ of the students is going down. And uh, spoiler alert, I used to be a student. and uh, It was as soon as you left. The IQ plummeted, obviously. This is the nicest thing you've ever said to me. You're feeling all right, Harry. I've been feeling a bit peaky this morning. I thought so. But um, I wanted to talk about this because there's been a, a large meta-analysis and there's been lots of hubbub about it. Because, of course, the state of universities more generally has been a hot topic, particularly with the stuff going on in Harvard and the likes, and as well as us talking about universities being pretty much a breeding ground for leftism at this point. And it's kind of a beating a dead horse to talk about it. But I think this is quite interesting. So here is the study itself. Oh, um, it is titled Meta-Analysis. On average, undergraduate students' intelligence is merely average which uh, is quite the condemnation because, of course, many people going to university think that it somehow makes them smart. And uh, one of the things that I kind of realized at university is that not everyone there is even close to being smart. And actually, if you want to do well at university, just work hard. You don't need to be smart. You don't need to be intelligent. Any old idiot can go to university these days. And as long as you actually do your work and do it well, you'll be fine. Is that not a bit of a condemnation, though? Yes, it is. So um, I always thought the whole point of schooling was to determine, you know, who's going to make it. Who's in. smart and who is not. Yeah. It's uh, now become who can jump through the most hoops willingly. It's almost be- become like, uh, you know, people train their dogs to do things. It's like a, a lesson in discipline from who, who owns you, which is the state, of course. Right. Very cynical view. There is obviously value in education. I don't want to demean that. And I'll, I'll talk about that side of things more as we go on because I got a lot of value out of my education. So I'm not going to be too dismissive, but I'm going to read some of the key points. Um, Hi folks, sorry to interrupt the video, but I just wanted to announce that we have a new line of merch in our merch store. The merch store was kind of empty for a while. And so I thought, right, okay, what do I actually want on shirts? And so I just went through some of the most epic and true things that I think that historical people have said. And John managed to make an amazing set of merch out of it. And we will have extra things coming in the store, such as posters for these to go on. Uh, Thanks for everything, folks. Now back to the video. So it says, the background, according to a widespread belief, the average IQ of university students is 115 to 130 IQ points. And um, that is substantially higher than the average IQ of the general population. And of course, the average is 100, at least in Britain, which the average is set by. So, you know, <laughs> I know how people make fun of us. are like, oh, where's the dateline for the whole world? It's like right through London. It's like, where's, where's 100 <laughs> IQ right in whatever British people think? <laughs> well, if the, if, right, if, the, if the line for average IQ is now being set by London, if that's what 100 is, then I've just gone up three standard deviations. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I don't think it's formally what London is. I think it's just that it so happens that Britain is just average. Yeah. Which uh, it hurts me to say. It perfectly it was also, average, a perfectly average empire. It does also say that data was from the 40s and 50s. Yeah, you've just stolen my next point, but thank you. Um, you're helping me out. That's fine. So it carries on to say, um, today graduating from university is actually more common than competing and um, completing even high school in the 40s. So in the 40s, they were more likely to drop out of high school than to drop out of university today, which is kind of mind blowing. I think that must be in the States. I think this particularly focuses on the States. And um, they said they conducted a meta-analysis of the mean IQ scores of college and university student samples using the Welshler Adult Intelligence Scale between 1939 and 2022. And they basically tried to measure the trend between the two. And that test is just one of the the variants of IQ tests. I've done a fair amount of work looking at these. And they say the results show that the average IQ of undergraduate students today is a mere 102 IQ points and has declined by approximately 0.2 IQ points per year. So 0.2 since 1939, one would presume. So that's quite the condemnation of university students because it's just average now, which um, isn't great. You know, all these people who think we know best, we're going to go on to manage things. We're the civil servants. We're working for the government. We're the bureaucrats, the councillors, all of those. They uh, just have a mere average intelligence. And why is it that nothing really works anymore? Hmm. Mm. But realistically speaking, the world that has been set up by managerial bu- bureaucracy, the 
amount of complexity within everyday life means that you do probably need at least a 110 IQ to be able to manage anything of it so due to the sheer complexity of the world that we live in right now. If you're in a developed, industrialized or, mm -hmm. or service-based economy in the West, if you're going to be doing anything important, I want you to be at least a a above average intelligence. Well, things are, in, in certainly in some industries, so complicated that they can't really be managed by one person. Uh, there's, um, as we're getting increasingly sophisticated with our technology and, and things like that, and we're developing advanced systems in which um, lots and lots of people are involved, a lot of people just simply can't comprehend the complexity of it. And I think you have to be very gifted to be able to understand the nature of complexity in the world today. But um, I wanted to talk through some of the implications of the, this finding, um, because the ones proposed in the study I actually thought were quite interesting. So they said, universities and professors need to realize that students are no longer extraordinary, but merely average and have to adjust curricula and academic standards, which you know we're, aren't we're, exactly high to begin with. Uh, is it going to dance around affirmative action? Is that what this paper is going to do? Yes. Yes, okay. Well, I, I will be getting onto that specifically, but feel free. Just, just to, uh, let's just get it out, straight out there. This is because of affirmative action. For decades now, universities and other places of education and business have been lowering the standard of criteria to be able to get into them for particular ethnic minority groups. And big surprise, when you're looking to increase the amount of students in the university that arbitrarily are under one ethnic category, and to, to get that many people in, you need to lower the standards. All of a sudden, the standard of the student you're going to have in those universities will automatically be lowered. As a logical chain of events, you don't even need to bring it into the real world to understand that that's obviously what is going to happen. Well, they've and stopped hiring. Surprised. They've stopped hiring based on merit, haven't they? That's what's going on here. Is that they're, they're getting people in um, who otherwise, if they were judged purely based on the quality of their work, wouldn't be able to get into certain institutions. And because they have this view of um, equity that you know you need everyone to be um, in sort of groups which reflect society. We need society. standardized outcomes. Yes, very Which strange. is just going to result in a race to the bottom, mm -hmm. lowest common denominator. And what this means is that all of those talented individuals who couldn't get into the universities because they were exceptional but needed to be pushed to the side to allow for an ethnic minority to come in, they're still out there. They're still really intelligent. They're just probably optimizing Hearts of Iron strats on Twitch right now. Callum. Um, anyway, um, it also carries on to say, employers can no longer rely on applicants with university degrees to be more capable or smarter than those without degrees. That is scathing. Um, students need to realize the, that acceptance into university is no longer an invitation to join an elite group. Um, and the myth of brilliant undergraduate students in scientific and popular literature needs to be dispelled. So those are quite um, strong statements, really. You know, it does skirt over some stuff. And it is worth mentioning as well, I have my questions about the validity of IQ as a measure of intelligence. And uh, IQ has been proven to be measuring something, some aspect of mental ability. But to call it intelligence necessarily, because there are lots of things that IQ simply doesn't measure, like it doesn't measure your creativity or lots of things that actually will come into play in the modern workplace that are quite important. And so to, to say it's a measure of intelligence when really it's sort of a mathematical ability, maybe analytical abilities in some cases, it's quite specific in what it measures. But what it does measure, it measures well, I think is the, the best thing you can say about it. So it's a sort of benchmark, but it shouldn't be seen as the be all and end all. Um, mm. That being said, um, I did write an article <laughs> once where I looked at the country with the lowest average IQ, which is Equatorial Guinea on the west coast of Africa, which had an IQ of 59, um, which, uh, if you know, the 70 benchmark is very low. And it actually took me to probably one of the most deprived countries in Africa. Um, and so there must be something to it if it made me realize that these people who are living on the equivalent of... Um, Two dollars a day, if I remember. I wrote this all the way back in 2021, so I uh, can't remember the specifics, but yes, it, it, it has its utility. Yeah, just, just to make it clear, 70 is the benchmark for what um, a medical doctor would classify as mental retardation. Yes. So uh, according to this IQ test, which uh, we apply 
for that area, that country is probably made up of quite a few people who are mentally retarded. Yes, by definition. Although yes. it doesn't sound very nice. Does it doesn't it? sound very nice, but it is accurate to point out. Mm-hmm. So um, Matt Goodwin pointed out something interesting. Um, I'm not going to go through his substack. If you want to uh, read it, go ahead. Um, but what I wanted to look at here was this graph and student visas particularly. So if you look at uh, since 2020, pretty much, um, what is that? India, sub-Saharan Africa, and the rest of South Asia have skyrocketed, but particularly sub-Saharan Africa and India, which I find interesting. So that, that suggests that perhaps there is a sudden influx that may be altering recent results in recent years. And that the makeup of students hasn't always been the same. That's is this the United States or the United Kingdom? I think this is the UK because that study was looking at the United is that States, the Home Office. Yes, but the trends in university students. Um, I've I've looked at other research as well, and it's true both in the UK and the United States. So we can kind of see it as a general trend in many Western countries. I think it's a good point to qualify because um, the expansion of education to lots of other people, I think, has um, altered. Um, the kind of student that comes out, I suppose, is fair to say. There's also that aspect on the uh, affirmative action end, which is not only are you introducing a wide audience of people who wouldn't have made it otherwise, you're also excluding people on the ethnic basis. Yes. And particularly the Chinese, mm-hmm. which on IQ tests score on average way higher than mm-hmm. pretty much everyone. I think it's well, they place, a, they place a very high cultural emphasis on mathematics, and the IQ test is significantly weighted towards mathematical ability, in my opinion, depending on which one you're doing. But, um, so, so what we're learning is that if you open up lots of routes for people to come to your country, where the countries they're coming from, having an IQ of 90, which is below average for us, but would mean that you're potentially exceptional, multiple standard deviations above the norm over there. Equatorial Guinea specifically. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. You're an exceptional person over there, below average over here. They come over here and then we go, oh, we can have everything you want. Join our universities. Yeah, that's going to reduce standards. Yeah, it's, it's funny that. Um, so it is also worth mentioning as well that there have been studies that have found that going into further education, um, is that this one? I I can't remember. Um, I need to double check actually. What's your IQ? Uh, Mine's not very good. (laughs) I went to university, so it actually got lower. Um, (laughs) He went in a 145 Chad, came out a 110 mid whip. Okay. So actually the, the IQ, sorry, this is a different study. Um, the, the IQ is explained 35% by their capacity on school performance, but their country of origin was 45%. So actually, country of origin is more important, which I found interesting and was seemingly the, one of the, the most important factors. But anyway, um, it's worth mentioning as well that if you know basic maths, if you've got um, a reasonable IQ, you'll know that the more people that um, do a thing the more it deviates to the average. That is uh, a law of averages, funnily enough. And uh, here is an article from The Guardian. In 2017, almost half of all young people in England go on to higher education. I imagine that this is a trend um, mirrored in many of the Western countries, that an increasing number as, as a percentage go to higher education. And so it makes sense that the more people that do a thing, the more it's going to go to the average, right? But um, it hasn't reached that yet. Um, here is, um, what is this? The, some sort of think tank have prepared this. Yes. UK. But basically they said, we're a long way off. Um, it's only at about 43% actually. It's not quite 50% yet. But um, that, yes. That, that feels like <laughs> nitpicking. That it feels, is. That feels like debunking right there. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, it's only 43%. Well, it makes a difference. That's 7%. It's, it's something. It's worth mentioning very briefly. It's only. It's actually slightly less than half. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And uh, comically enough, um, apparently puberty blockers are, have been linked to having lower IQs. Um, I can't say much more about that, lest we get in trouble. But um, yes, there, there could be a potential explanatory factor in this day and age. Um, also, um, there's this as well that universities now are about. female in my psychology course. It was 85%, at least undergraduate. And so... So you had run of the mill. (laughs) 
<laughs> that's one way of looking at it, yes. And um, this is something that's been talked about very frequently, that male intelligence has a wider range. So you have more complete morons and more geniuses, and female intelligence tends to um, spike higher around the sort of average, which is, you know, no, no, no apportioning blame or anything like that, or no calling people stupid. It's just um, the way in which human beings seemingly have developed. And so I can't really um, make too many conclusions about it. But with more women, it makes sense that it's more towards the average because that's how the IQs plot um, on a graph more so. So that might be another explanation as well as just more people going and more international students. And uh, here is something else as well. The, a lot of the education system now has been catered towards uh, making women achieve and, and girls and actually boys perform worse all the way from sort of the essential education that they do, the, the mandatory education all the way up until university. And so the system seems to be very female oriented in how it's structured and taught. There, there has been for ages now that massive push to get as many girls in STEM mm -hmm. as possible. And then you see organizations like, uh, what, what was the one that had the gigantic panel blow out of its um, airplane the other week? Oh, Boeing. Yeah, Boeing, and then oh, Boeing. Was it American, I can't remember. I, I think it was I think Boeing. It Boeing, yeah. Boeing shares a video of the team that's putting those together or designing them or something, and it's just all women. Mm -hmm. They're very proud of that fact. Yes, mm. you're it's right very... though, because that that IQ difference isn't IQ isn't everything, of course. Of course, yeah. But it is obvious that if you want excellence in science, then you have to be exclusive, and you have to be exclusive on the basis of finding the best, and the best. If we can go back to that chart real quick between the male sure. and the female, because that last line, that dotted line, the male to female ratio, when you get to the geniuses right at the end there, it's really extreme. It's about as extreme as people who are really violent. Yes. If you take the, the most violent people in society, they're all men. If you take the, the most uh, high IQ people, they're almost all men. So if you wanted excellence in science, that's what you'd look for. But instead, if you just want a quality of well, genitals, and then even more female genitals than male genitals for some reason, then you end up setting up the system that you're accurately describing, which mm -hmm. is that you make sure that females succeed in the entire system from birth to grave. I know that but in the those... UK data, um, working class white men are the most underrepresented in higher education and black women are the most overrepresented in higher education. So what does that say? That's in the UK. This does not surprise me. Just for those not, uh, not watching and instead listening, the ratio, it seems, of genius men to genius women is nine to one at the very extreme at, at the very extreme of, the, of those those are the sorts of people who will be creating paradigm shifts in whatever field it is that they're working in Me, really let's be honest oh, no I'm, I'm joking obviously. Av average three standard deviations right there <laughs> no probably not um anyway where was i so it's also worth mentioning as well that female teachers um are more and more common these days and it's been found to be an observable trend that they give boys lower marks for the same work. And there's actually this perception from the boys. So the boys understand that women are more likely to discriminate against them and their right, which is kind of infuriating, really, because I've butted my head against the education system on the way up uh, to where I am today. And I found it incredibly frustrating. Like it, it felt like everyone was working against me, and I really had to struggle. To actually make anything of myself. I can also speak to this. I've had the same thing, even as early as primary school, which yes. is hilarious. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So we, um, in my primary school, I, my mom remembers this vividly. So she tells me, I know it's a laugh we have in our family, which is that the teacher for pink class, which was like year three or something, uh, was a woman. And she did parents evening and told my mother that she didn't want to teach boys and hated boys. I had a primary school really? teacher like that as well, yeah. It was just like, well, why are you here? She was like, well, I couldn't go to an all-girls school, so I'm here. Uh, and she was just awful to all the, all the male students. Did you I imagine going into teaching and thinking, I'm so twisted in my own head that I'm only interested in teaching one sex of children? But if you're like that, you'd keep it to yourself at least. But no, she just says it at her parents' evening. And that's primary school where you know, education's kind of a joke, right? But that went all the way up into university as well, the same trend. Mm. And the more funny part of that, what is the reverse? Are male teachers giving women lower grades on purpose? I don't think so. Not that no. I can tell. No, it doesn't happen. Like, like male teachers, <sighs> how blunt can I be? Um, 
if you've got female students, not only is there an institutional bias that you should give them the best marks possible, there's also a sex difference, which is that you don't, men don't want to be bad or rude to women. There's no reason to just be like, nah, I hate women, yeah. Like, unless you're what many, many feminists get wrong is that men are actually nicer to women than they are to other men. But those female teachers, I mean, the ones I'm speaking of and that we know of in this study, yeah, they, they genuinely just hate boys. And it's like, okay, you're horrible to be around. Yeah, well. I, I was mostly taught by men growing up, so I didn't really experience much of that. But the few female teachers that I did have, I did notice quite a few of them were much more um, standoffish and blunt than the men were in a way that felt very forced. I've, I've I didn't some... feel like they were purposefully being uh, discriminatory to the boys, but maybe that's where I'm from versus where you guys went. I've had some rather excellent teachers of both sexes as well. So, Obviously. you know, it's very contingent on the individual. Just to clarify, I'm sure everyone's on board with what we're saying anyway. But anyway, let's look at this. This was the study that I foreshadowed earlier. And apparently um, going through um, education can increase your IQ by... One to five points, apparently. So actually, maybe measuring it at the end of their education rather than the beginning might actually um, suggest that it's raising people's IQ. But then, um, you know, it depends um, what kind of thing they're studying, I would imagine. This is an average of all students. And so it should be um, probably disproportionately weighted towards subjects where they've got a mathematical basis that complements an IQ test. I imagine if you're doing gender studies, there may actually be a decline Maybe that or, or post-colonial studies, there will probably be a decline as well. However, I wanted to talk about this because this is the final thing that I thought was hilarious. And this is um, a journalist called Anna Stanley. She went to uh, a King's College anti-terrorism course, and this is for civil servants. Of course, King's College um, is a, a London-based university, quite a good one. And um, wow. I just want to read... Um, a little bit from this, and she says, the course began with um, the issue of definitions. What is terrorism? Without anyone providing an opposing standpoint, we were taught the adage, one, one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist. So it's basically like the left wing of the Labour Party defining what a terrorist is. And what about it, baby rapists? Can we, can we, are, they, <laughs> can we, are they ever freedom fighters? I just... I would say no. In France, yeah, Controversial. Because um, <laughs> you're so right. I'm so bored of hearing that. Or it's like, okay, yes, when we're talking about like the Taliban or something, there's an argument made. But a baby rapist organization, like, no, 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 they're terrorists. <laughs> that's, that's not a discussion we're having. And it carries on to say, all the civil servant um, participants were given a topic to research and present. One attendee said her brother had been radicalized and fought in Syria for Islamic State. Yep. Phew, I thought, at least one person here will understand the problem of extremism. Her, per her presentation was about the UK's counter-terrorism strategy, Prevent. She argued Prevent is inherently racist because it focuses on Islamist extremism. Because Islam they're after my brother specific. Yes. Islam also not a race, it's a religion. And also targeting Islam when they themselves sometimes describe themselves as terrorists, as in the actual terrorists, right? And, they understand and her own what brother is in... I mean, yeah, you're an idiot. Um, the mere mention of Islamist extremism makes Muslims feel uncomfortable, she argued. Tough. The thought of being blown up on the tube makes me uncomfortable. I think I win on that one. Her brother would, be, um, would have most certainly agreed. Um, later on, we were shown an ISIS propaganda recruitment video filmed in Syria. The same attendee's <laughs> face then, lit and then up. And then and given leaflets <laughs> <laughs> on how to join. And she stood up hand on heart during the whole thing. <laughs> but apparently that same attendee's face lit up, laughing and pointing oh at God. the jihadi in the video. He used to go to my school. I know him, she exclaimed. My mouth agape, I looked around the room uh, for responses to yet another... Um, disclosure involving personal links to ISIS terrorists. I appeared to be the only one to find this extraordinary. Why? why well, you are a normal person, Anna. But this apparently, these people have been are not immediately arrested. Well, yes, if you course. ask me <laughs> clearly. But obviously. this so sort of thing, although they're not, you know, formerly students, they're civil servants, which almost makes it worse. Um, but it's a university course, right? And it's more or less the inverse of what should be taught. And this has happened in a lot of educational settings where. Normally, it would be set up, you know, a counter-terrorism course would probably be set up to counter-terrorism. I, I don't know about you, but that would be my understanding. And uh, it seems like it's just a place where uh, people who are sympathetic to terrorists have gone. And the same thing goes for things like sociology, where, you know, it purports to understand society. Actually, it's just a vehicle for ideology. 
a lot of it anyway. Not all of it. I've covered some sociology and, you know, particularly the stuff um, pre-World War II can be quite interesting because it's not politically biased. I think around that time it became a vehicle for politics. But it's got to the point where even Forbes is saying that universities need to rebrand themselves because it's not going well. For them. What are the suggestions in here? I didn't go for it because I imagine they're pretty entry level because it's Forbes and they're boring. I, I, I've got an idea because there's been recent discourse that I've seen on the idea of what, what are systems for and people putting forward the idea that the purpose of a system is what it does. You can say that, oh, we intend to do this, but what it actually does is what the purpose of it is. So perhaps leftist retard factories. I don't know. I mean, maybe some ICE sponsorships on the side. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. maybe. Some ways to raise money. <laughs> I mean, what do universities do? They're supposed to give you an education and teach you how to think, but what they actually produce is leftist retards. Yeah, we should probably avoid in university indoctrination and politics. I think if a, pos uh, if a topic isn't explicitly political, there shouldn't be politics in it. And that if you're paying to get an education and paying a lot of money, you know, I paid some of mine out of my own pocket. You want a quality education. You don't want to hear some professor's narcissistic views on, you know, Donald Trump or what have you. It is not relevant. It's, it's a waste of time. But people still listen to them because they're an authority. And I, I, I was doing a media degree and I still got that. I know, yes. But my point in bringing this up is that it's, it's very interesting to me that there's been a push on the left to send as many people to university as possible. And it turns out that it's not really having um, particularly desirous effects for wider society. And in fact, I think many people would benefit from doing a trade and you know learning in their spare time rather than paying an institution which they get a piece of paper at the end. You know, it, it can offer a valuable education. I got a good one. But... At the same time, you don't need universities now more than ever. If you appreciated that episode from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the symposium series, this episode on pseudoscience. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Twitter at lotuseaters underscore com on Twitter.